G'day everyone, my name is Barney and today we're going to be trying to make L systems a little bit more useful. So I love L systems, they're a great way of generating some really organic looking shapes and as you can see here, I've got a lovely looking plant that's generated with an L system. And when I click the mouse, I'm going to generate a new plant using the same L system. And as you can see, it's the exact same plant. And this is just a characteristic of L systems. They're deterministic. So every single plant we generate with a given set of rules is going to generate the exact same plant. And this is a little bit boring and completely unlike nature. So we're going to try and add some random elements to this plant to make it more organic and more natural. So I've actually looked at L systems in the past on this channel, and you can check that video out here. I highly suggest that you go and watch that if you either don't know what L systems are or want a little bit more detail in how I've implemented them inside P5JS because in this video, I'm actually going to be building on the code that we wrote in that last video. So go and check that out if you haven't already. And then of course, come back to this video once you're done. I'm just going to show you what I've changed to be able to upgrade it so that it can handle random L systems. And of course, the code will be linked in the description. So you can open that up and follow along with me if you'd like. And the observant among you will notice that we've got a completely different L system that we're generating from the previous video. And that's just to keep things fresh and interesting. Just like the previous video, the rules for this L system are listed here. And as you can see, it's pretty straightforward L system. And in the setup function, we've also got to find a set of draw rules. So this is how we interpret the characters of our L system to be able to draw them and represent them on the canvas. Now we will be adding to these to make our L system a little bit more interesting, but we'll get into that in a little bit. But first I'm gonna show you how I upgraded the generate function to handle sprinkling in a little bit of randomness into our L system. So this generate function is very similar to the one from the previous video. So if you have seen that, this will probably look mostly familiar to you. Basically what we're doing is we're looping over all of the characters inside our L system and we're checking if a rule exists for that character. And if that rule does exist, what we did in the past was we just added that rule into the next generation because we just had a one-to-one -one mapping of a character to a rule. But now what we're gonna have is an array of different rules that a single character from our L system can map to as well as some probabilities so that we can wait how our L system will choose the different rules that it's got available to it. And if our rule is an array, you can see I'm using a function here called choose one, which will choose one of the options from our rule set and use that in the next generation. And this choose one function is pretty straightforward. First, it generates a number between zero and one. And then what we do is we loop over all of the different rules in our rule set, adding up their probability until our total probability has surpassed the number that we generated. And that's the option that we're gonna choose. So it's really important that the probabilities of your options add up to one because otherwise this choose one function will freak out a little bit, but probabilities should add up to one if you're following best practices, if you're following best practices. So make sure you do that. So coming back up to our rules now, you can see that they're just mapping to a string, which means they're gonna be using the old method of generating the L system. So we can actually replace these with arrays with different options in them so that we can use that new path that uses the choose one function to randomly create our L system. So you can see X is now mapped to an array of different rules that it can take. And this first rule here is the same as the original rule we had, and it's got a 50% chance of happening. And then I've got two more rules here, both with a 25% chance of happening. This first one here is missing this plus X branch. And the second one is missing the minus X branch. So we're gonna have some missing branches from our L system. And if you come over to the right here, you can see that in practice. And every time I click the mouse, we're getting a new random L system generated for us. And this is exactly what I wanted to happen. But just cutting branches off this tree isn't the most exciting thing we can do with it. So we're gonna keep going and add some more rules to see what we can achieve and make this plant even more lifelike. So as you can see, I've added some more rules here. To the X, I've added these two, which have extra rotations for the side branches. So they're gonna be even more skewed and hanging further out from the main branch. I've also turned the F rules into an array now and the original one still has the highest chance of happening, but I've also added some extra growth and some stunting as well with varying probabilities. And again, you've got to make sure that these probabilities add up to one so that that choose one function can operate properly. And when we run this, you can see we're getting even more variety in the plants that we're generating from this L system with some really basic modifications to our base rules but we're still just drawing lines at this point. So we're gonna add something a bit more interesting to add some fruits and berries to our tree. To facilitate this, I've again added two new rules and you can see they're very similar to our original rule, but instead of having this X at the end, I've got an A for the first one and a B for the second one. But these A and B characters aren't in our draw rules. So at the moment, they're not actually gonna be doing anything. So coming down to our draw rules, you can see I've added both an A and a B function to them. And what they do is very straightforward. They just set the fill color and then draw a circle at our current location. 
and the B function is identical to the A except that it uses a different color. So we've got two different colored fruits or berries in our plant now. And when we run this, you can see the fruits of our labor paying off. So we've got these different colored berries that are generating on our L system now. And you can see every time I click the mouse, we're getting a completely new plant that is similar to the other ones that we've generated, but unique in its own right, which is a massive improvement on what the L system that we had from the last video left us with, which was the exact same plant every single time. So I hope this really gives you a bit of an insight onto what you can do with L systems and how you can easily modify them and change these rules to generate some really cool looking plants. And it doesn't have to just be plants either. So if you look on the Wikipedia page for L systems, you can see there's a whole bunch of different ways that these L systems can be used to generate everything from geometric shapes to very organic ones. So like I said, the code will be in the description. So please grab it and play around with it. And I'd love to see what you guys come up with. If you come up with anything cool, let me know in the comments so I can check it out. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out. And if you're enjoying the creative coding P5JS content, then definitely subscribe as well. There's a video here that YouTube reckons you'd like next. Otherwise, there's a playlist here with all of my other P5JS videos in it so you can become a code wizard in no time at all. I'll see you next time.